Ready? Okay, so <clears throat> kettlebell support, using kettlebells, submaximal weight most of the time. You're doing a whole bunch of repetitions. I find this wonderful because it teaches you incredible form um, and how to stay focused. So, a lot of repetition. How do you know how your repetitions are good? Follow something. So we have more biofeedback. I am using a tool that was very frowned upon when it was incorporated into, let's say, the kettlebell uh, sport arena. And a lot of people talked a bunch of crap about it, and I thought it was a wonderful tool at the time, and it still is. So I'm going to use this, and it has a couple different things to watch how my snatch maintains its form over time. So I can watch on this iPad how my reps are the same and when they start getting sloppy I can change. Alright, so here I'm watching speed, I'm watching revolution of the bell around my arm, I'm feeling whether it's shaky, it should end in the same position. So this is really cool. I can see on that monitor, see that pause? Now here we go, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do a couple repetitions the way I normally snatch, then I'm going to change and we're going to see what fits my body better. Four and five. Now I'm going to change. Do you see a difference? I'm going to change back. And it's down. So, like I said, I've used this tool for biofeedback and external stimulus so I can learn how to do this better um, without just relying on how I feel. So I can watch it, I can sense changes in speed, changes in position. Um, I think a lot of people are using accelerometers for power lifting, Olympic lifting and stuff. There's really no difference. Wait to wait. This is slightly how it's different. Excuse me. Barking up here. Um, it's just different because we're working on higher repetitions. So, instead of one rep, five rep, we're going for 20, 50, 100, multiple hundreds, um, just depends. So anyway, I'm still watching that. And this is so sensitive that it's even picking up atmospheric disturbances, which is cool. I can stomp around it, it's making picks that up. So it just depends on what I do. I can focus on, let's say, a high pull swing. And I can watch that monitor. It should make the same graph as I go. Now I can focus on changing things. I can watch the readout.
Okay, let's change it and do a swing squat. So anyway, more biofeedback is awesome in your training. And like I said, a lot of people talk crap in kettlebell sport about this because if you don't know what this is, you're gonna have to answer questions. Um, a lot of people talk crap about that because it was changing how they were used to doing things. If they're getting 100 reps without this tool, telling them that they had stopped or fixated or got to this point or quit moving, let's say they get 85 repetitions. That's a big ego blast for people that have had certain things up there, but basically, it's a evening up the playing field when you have a computer that is non-biased helping someone. So for training, this is absolutely incredible to use. Um, we can do a whole lot of different things, but you're probably starting to bore you now. So if you have any questions on using certain tools and uh, things for increasing your kettlebell um, experience and or fluency, I speak kettlebell. Um, you know, give us a shout. Anyway, swing this. Wait, whatever that means.